Hey everyone! First things first, I wanted to thank you guys so much for the 100,000 of you that are subscribed to my channel. It's a huge milestone for me and I am so, so grateful. I didn't expect it to happen so quickly because I've definitely started up um, totally fresh on social media many times before and it always took me a very long time to be able to amass any sort of substantial following so I, I'm really kind of baffled by how quickly it happened and yeah I just wanted to express my gratitude to you guys and the fact that I really appreciate that you watch my content and leave comments behind and that you're generally interested in the stuff that I create so just wanted to have a brief moment of celebration with you guys but not linger on this too long because I know there's not like a whole much else I could say but I would love to hear about what it is that you like about my YouTube channel and what you'd like to see more of in the comments below that would be awesome and I'll definitely take that into account going forward and I already do have a ton of plans for different types of videos that I'm planning to make in the future which I will actually mention a little bit later but yeah before i get to the content of this video which is this um illustration that i'm working on i wanted to say that this is actually the second time i'm recording this voiceover because mysteriously the first time around the quality of the audio was just atrocious and it sounded like i was talking into a tin can and i couldn't understand what went wrong because uh, the microphone was plugged in and, you know, presumably I was using it, but after some thorough investigation, it turned out that I was, in fact, using the Cintiq built-in secret microphone to record my audio all along, which, just heads up, you guys, the Cintiq has a built-in microphone, which apparently nobody knew about because when I googled it, people were also surprised and confused. And most of what it records is unfortunately the fan, which is in the same area, I guess, where the microphone is on the Cintiq. So yeah, I thought that was kind of ridiculous. Anyhow, as you've probably gathered from the title, this video is all about Inktober. And I guess many other videos going forward will be because I am kind of participating this year. And the reason why I say kind of is because, as most of you probably know, Inktober is typically a challenge of making one inked drawing every single day for the duration of the month but from my personal experience it just uh, it, it's futile for me to even attempt to make an illustration every single day for an entire month and honestly i'm kind of past the point where i'm into challenges and such things and i just want to avoid burnout at all costs because it tends to sneak up on me and it really kind of ruins my flow so this year i'm just focusing on taking it easy but maybe making at least 15 drawings if i can and even that's like you know that's aiming pretty high i've already kind of failed in that regard because i've only made two so far but yeah that being said this is the first drawing that i made for the first time i decided to use a prompt list which is probably kind of crazy because most people use prompts and there are a ton of cool prompt lists floating around every single year. However, I have never actually used a prompt list before because I've always found it... I don't know, I never really came across ones I liked. And I always just wanted to stick to drawing my characters without feeling too restrained. Which is what I do every single year and this year is no different from that. But I did find a prompt list that seemed to kind of speak out to me and I liked... The majority of the prompts on it and that one in particular is hashtag 10 embers and was created by marudi bitterman on instagram i will link her account in my description so that's what i decided to follow but like i said i'm probably not going to do every single one of them but yeah so this is the first prompt and it was called apparition as i promised in my last video i would tell you guys a little bit more about my process and in this, for this particular illustration, I actually managed to record pretty much all of it from scratch, which was good, I thought, because typically, as you may have noticed, I do start my videos when the sketch is already complete, or at least the preliminary sketch is complete. So it's a bit of a rare occurrence, and I'm glad I did it. The only issue is that I forgot to record the very last bit where I was just adding some red 
uh, pops of color at the very end, but you know, that's fine. I'll just try better next time. <laughs> All right, so since I rambled through the vast majority of the beginning stages of this drawing, I'm just gonna quickly explain what um, happened on the screen while it wasn't narrating it. I basically decided to use a acid-free marker to do the first sketch to plan out the placement of all the um, elements like the characters and such. Uh, the reason why I picked a marker, I suppose, is because it kind of just locks it in and it forces me to slow down and be more careful. I think it's a pretty good way to go, but it is kind of a bold move, so I don't um, necessarily recommend it if you don't feel too comfortable. But that being said, the marker is very light, so it does get covered up pretty easily by the ink that goes over top, so overall it's not a big deal even if I do make mistakes or uh, make some lines that I want to disregard later or change placement of small things. So yes, after that what I did was do a preliminary sketch or essentially the sketch of the illustration using a mechanical pencil, just regular HB lead mm, kind of soft so that it's pretty easy to erase. I used to prefer harder lead but with this particular method it's it's better to avoid harder lead because it kind of leaves marks on the paper anyways speaking of the paper the paper that i'm using for this illustration is a block by the brand called saunders waterford i i believe i will double check that and leave a link in the description for um, this paper and uh it's been my favorite so far i found out about it through purchasing a art supply box from Hey Kala on Instagram. And yeah, I think it was a really good purchase for me because I actually really like a lot of her art supplies and especially this particular brand paper and the inks that she uses. Those I bought all of them and I actually use them all the time now and they are my favorite as well. So I would highly recommend checking that box out. I don't know if she still makes them or not, but it was a very good purchase. Anyways, so the ink I'm using for this piece is Matte Black Star Waterproof India Ink by Dr. P.H. Martens. My favorite ink to use and I use it all the time. I don't know if there is much of a difference between this one and the Aurora Ink Kling Klingner one that I also use that also came from the Heikala art box, but um, yeah, they for intents and purposes, they appear to be the same. So this is just the one that I bought previously and I do use it all the time. So yeah, the reason why the line art looks a bit soft is because I tend to dilute it with water like 90% of it before I start inking the characters or the main elements of an illustration. And the reason why I like to dilute the ink is because it just tends to soften the, the look of the lines like I already mentioned but the reason why that's so useful to me is that it prevents the image from looking too flat further down the line and as I add more tones and add shading like light lighting and shadows it really kind of makes the image more atmospheric whereas when I use just black to ink the main elements it does tend to flatten it a lot and um, it's a little harder to make the image moody and you know how i like the moody images <laughs> every single thing that i draw is basically um yes very very moody indeed anyways so yeah as you can see for the water here i decided to use a brush it was kind of a spontaneous decision in fact most of the decisions that went into this piece were pretty spontaneous and so i actually want to explain to you guys a little bit about the struggles that led up to me making this illustration so my plan initially was to do a bunch of more stylized and um like shape design focused pinup type of illustrations of my characters or something like that it's the first thing that came to mind because maybe it's been a while since I've done stuff like that specifically. And that is something that I really enjoy doing, but it is quite different from what you're looking at on the screen. And the reason why I did not end up going with that at all is because I guess I just kind of took it too seriously. And, and then I wanted to determine like what kind of style I want to go 
uh, go with how far I want to stylize um, and simplify my character designs and such and like there just seemed to be so many decisions that had to be made popping up that I just kind of my, my brain just went into freeze mode and I could not really make up my mind and it honestly prevented me from starting it just gave me like paralysis and in the end I decided to just completely let it go and I decided to go with this prompt list pretty much last minute and I'm really glad that I did because it just sitting down making a quick commitment not overthinking it and um just doing something on the spot uh, I did do a small thumbnail first for this drawing uh because it is typically pretty important for me to know what I'm going to draw like to have a solid idea in mind but as some of you may know if you've watched my previous videos I do very small and um, stick figure type of um, thumbnails so I don't do a whole lot of preliminary work, work which uh, takes me to the fact that a lot of spontaneous decisions were made during this piece and I really like that process one of my favorite parts about making it a less uptight and less planned out type of situation is that I tend to discover what I gravitate towards naturally and sometimes decisions are not the best but I always learn something new and it always enhances my ability to fix mistakes as they occur while I'm drawing which is always something that I enjoy. Yeah, so you, you, you can say that in some sense. One of my favorite parts about traditional art is just being able to save it after a mistake. And that happens pretty much every single time. So yeah, always keeps me on my toes. I initially actually was going to have this be more of a light piece. That's kind of what it looked like to me when I started it out. But I did decide to go with a dark background to make the apparition in the background pop more. And that pretty much dictated the type of lighting that I would be doing for the character. And this is actually where I want to mention that I wasn't planning to use any colors initially because I thought I would just go straight back to basics the way Inktober was intended to just use black ink and nothing else but when I was done with this drawing it really looked like the main character and the main focus of this piece which is Noel who is sitting on a dock uh, was supposed to be the main focus yes uh, but she really kind of just fell by the wayside because of the lack of contrast and so I decided to make her color red, which would bring her back into the um, center of the piece, I guess. I'm pretty happy with how the water turned out. I think that's one of my favorite parts about this piece. And I'm glad I made the decision to not ink it with thin lines and instead to just create an effect or water type of texture using a brush and i think that's something that i want to try doing a little bit more of going forward um, i'm gonna see if i can come up with some ideas where i will experiment with painting foliage without using a nib like i do for the characters and also just use a brush to see what i can do with that but yeah as you can see here i'm pretty much approaching the end and like i said i did not record the part where i was <laughs> adding the red pop of color to her hair but i did use ink even though it was colored ink so technically it's still just ink mostly used in this piece oh yeah although i did use a pencil to create the glowing effect around the apparition so yeah technically it is mixed media i suppose but anyways yeah, before I forget, I wanted to let you guys know that I I know today's Wednesday and typically on Wednesdays I post my reference Wednesdays videos, even though I know they've been super sporadic over the past couple of months, I guess, at this point, ugh, which is so shameful. But yeah, I am planning to make a big comeback and I'm actually working on something special, kind of, I guess we can call it special, but yeah, I was supposed to make that video for today but i didn't quite make it and i'm going to be away from my 
studio for the next five days or so so i guess i'm just gonna have to move it to next week and hopefully next week i will be able to execute the video that i've been planning but yeah if any of you were wondering i will bring back the reference wednesday's videos just gotta finish this one thing that i started and in the meantime i hope you enjoyed this video and i will be recording all of my octobers going forward and sharing all of them with you i don't know how i'm going to fit that into the schedule yet but hopefully i will just find a way to edit them more quickly so i will just i guess be posting more often this month which would be great because i have been quite absent as of late but yeah i hope you found something useful in my voiceover commentary which I'm a little bit rusty at, admittedly. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching the process as well. I think this uh, editing style works quite well and I think it gives it a more relaxed type of atmosphere to look at. And yeah, thanks so much again for 100k subscribers. It's huge and I love you guys. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you in the next one. Bye.